Stop right there, criminal scum! <laughs> Heyo, my rambunctious scrum the delicious art nerds. Today I got something light for you, none too crazy or whatever. What? I mean, I got a little shum shum cooking, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> what? I got a little baby, you know what I'm saying? Oh, what? what? Don't you speak English? I said I got a short video for you today. Damn. Go get your ears checked, fam. What's wrong with y'all? <laughs> okay, I'm too stupid with these intros. But okay though, for real, uh, I know right now someone's probably saying, what you got cooking for us today, DD Mark? Well, how nice of you to ask. Today, we'll be talking about why you suck at making manga. JK, JK, we're actually gonna be talking about my top five mistakes that I see newer manga artists to make. Okay, so before we jump right in this bit, keep in mind I consider myself an absolute noob at this manga stuff compared to like seasoned dudes and dudettes like White Manga, Yusuke Murata, Tatsuki Fujimoto and all those shonen jump nerds and such. But that being said, I still think I've got a whole lot of experience compared to the youngins and other aspiring manga artists I'd be seeing out there in, in these, in the streets, in this, the, in these Instagram, the, the, the streets of Instagram? What? I mean, I don't mean to brag or nothing, but some people say I'm a god or whatever, or like, uh, like I'm goaded at this art stuff, uh -huh, you know, type shit. But uh, I mean, I don't mean to brag or nothing. <clears throat> Anyways, top five mistakes new manga artists make. Let's go. Uh. Number one. Oh, dear Lord. Number one is a pet peeve of mine, not gonna lie. And it's new manga artists feel the need to get ready and better at first. <sighs> Bruh, stop it. Just stop it. Like, just stop. Get better how? Like, like I mean, come on. Like, like bro, like, come on, bro. If you want to be a manga artist, you need to make manga. And, and guess what? If you want to improve at being a manga artist, you, you also need to make manga. Like, like, a lot of new artists think manga is just cool art, so they practice and practice because they want to draw cool art, which is fine, but thinking that's going to translate to a good manga is so wrong. There's elements to manga that make it so much more than just cool pictures. There's paneling, page flow, composition within the panel, composition of the page, lettering, how you do bubbles, sound effects, etc. Like, studying the human anatomy, perspective, and all that is important, don't get me wrong, but doing that stuff will make you a better illustrator, not comic or manga artist. And I argue that you can be a great mangaka without the art skills. I mean, look at one. Okay, so with this first point, let me be educational a little. If this is you and you want to be a manga artist and not just some cool picture guy, go make manga and suck the first couple times. Then learn from your mistakes and gradually improve. And if you want to have good art and have a good manga, then do what I did. Which is, when I wasn't drawing pages, I was practicing and improving at the drawing fundamentals. But also at the same time, I was learning paneling, page floor, and all that good stuff from the mistakes I would make. Okay, so numero dos. New manga artists put themselves in a box. What do I mean by this? They set limitations on themselves from the get-go by giving their work labels like shonen and seinen. And my advice to you is, if you want to make manga or comic stories that are unique and outstanding, is... Stop caring about that stuff and don't even claim whatever people think it is. Like, if people say your work is shonen or seinen, don't claim that shit. Just smile and wave. Just smile and wave, boys. Not putting yourself in the box of seinen and shonen will allow you to think outside the box when it comes to your story and not to be at the mercy of the conventions and the tropes within the genres. This mindset is why we have series like Jujutsu Kaisen, Chainsaw Man, and Kaiju Number no. 8 which although are labeled shonen and have some elements of the shonen genre, stand apart from almost everything the Jump magazines have put out in this lifetime. Manga like Black Clover and Bill King are examples of clinging too tight to the genre you're labeled as, which isn't necessarily a bad thing cause you know, I love Black Clover, but like Bill King, everyone kinda agrees it's generic. So my educational note from this tip is, um, if it wasn't clear, is don't set limitations on yourself. Tip number three, coming off as fanboy-ish and disingenuous. So this one is a very, 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 and I cannot stress very prevalent one I see among aspiring, specifically non-Japanese manga artists, and it's pretty self-explanatory. It's like, it's so cringe, like, it's so cringe. I mean, if you're a dude from Minneapolis, Minnesota, why is your story set in Japan, in a fictional town you made up using Google Translate, and with a Japanese protagonist whose name you decided on, 
using Google Translate, whose superpowers were made up and named using Google Translate. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Like, if you don't live in Japan, speak Japanese, or have any knowledge of the Japanese culture, neither have you done any or enough research. My question is, why? You can't just say because anime is set in Japan and, and I like anime, because I don't, I don't think that's a good enough reason. Because plainly put, you're basing your knowledge of a whole country, group of people, and culture on cartoons. And it's kind of offensive if you ask me. My point is, everybody has got a story to tell and has their own unique life experiences, so you should incorporate that in your own story. That way, it comes off as genuine, and someone out there would relate to it if they've had similar experiences. That being said, when you straight up copy some Japanese shonen or make up a bunch of stuff using Google Translate just because you're a fan, it comes out that way, and it reads fanboyish and disingenuous and it's, and it's cringe. And I don't know about anyone else, but when I see that stuff, I don't care how good the art is. I'm, I just don't take it seriously, like deep down, I don't take you seriously. Uh, don't believe me? Well, here's what famous manga artists had to say about it. Tip number four, new manga artists apply a set formula. I don't want or need to say too much about this one, but it kind of goes hand in hand with tip number two and not putting yourself in a box. And basically, there's no way to do anything. There's different ways to do bubbles, panels, inks, tones, storyboards, and etc. The mistake I made when I was starting out was that I forced myself to do things a certain way because that's the way the professionals did it. Like I would force myself not to tone as much and shade as much because that's what most manga artists did. Then one day I realized the famous artists that stand out from the rest do things very, very different from the industry standard. And this is why they stand out. I mean, I mean, Inoue, Murata, Oda, Miura, their artwork is anything but generic manga art. And that's why they shine. Part of their unique voice is not only in their stories, but their art as well. Another point that goes in this tip is Aomaji. If you're not being published in Japan and your manga isn't written in Japanese, Stop making your manga read from right to left. You look like a clown. At least to me. And some of my manga homies, you do. But hey, what do I know? And lastly, tip number five. New manga artists tend to focus on everything but the story. This one is so painful and it's also cringe as well. It seems a lot of new artists focus way too hard on having fight scenes and forcing it in with little to no thought put in the story itself. This also goes with art as well. New artists focus on having good art and having fight scenes, and then their story is usually flat, incomprehensible, cringy, sometimes plainly stupid, and the dialogue is abhorrent. And it's not to say these artists are talentless or dumb or nothing, it's just, you know, I know you put in little to no effort with your story and you just wanna draw cool fights, which is fine, but understand what you want. If you someday want to be published or have an audience or a graphic novel, Cool fights are not enough. To be very honest, a good fight is only as a result of a clash in ideologies between the people fighting and not necessarily the moves they're making. It's more about the meaning of the fight that makes it good and impactful. And I'll tell you what, if your story isn't good, the fights are definitely not going to be good as well. And boom, the five mistakes I see new manga artists make. Uh, so one last thing before I end the video, you as always can literally just discard everything I said in this video. If you do everything I mentioned in this list and you're genuinely happy doing it, who am I and who is anyone to stop you from doing it? But if you want to improve as an artist, a manga artist, and creator, if you want your works to one day rival those that run in the Jump magazines, then definitely in my opinion, consider making a change if you find that you're someone who does any of the things on this list. And of course, if you straight up just disagree with me, then just let me know in the comments. It's fine. My word isn't law. My word isn't gospel. You're allowed to disagree. And that's the video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to hit that like button to let me know that you did. And make sure to subscribe and turn on the notification bell so you know when my dumb self uploads another video. Also, make sure to leave a comment because I respond to any and all comments. And uh, till next time, nerds. Deuces.